We now turn our attention to the biggest K-pop headline of the week. An internal probe by Hive suspecting New Jeans label Adore of making moves to attract investors and make way for the subsidiary to break out on its own. Executive of Adora quickly fought back against the allegations and the media frenzy, stating that's not what the internal tug of war is about. There's nothing internal about it anymore. For further insights, we now connect with Isaac Kim. Good morning, Isaac. Good morning. What a week to cover. Yeah, it's still ongoing. Frankly, it's a developing story. And there's a whole lot of he said, she said. So we threw the noise and maybe gets the meat of this discussion. Uh, Can you maybe first explain for our listeners the relationship between Hybe and Adore? So Hybe, um, as they, you know, amassed this, acquired these these K-pop assets, um, using a strategy called a multi-label uh, strategy, unlike other uh, management or, or music production companies that just kind of um, had one streamlined system, they kind of used a system of the like the headquarters and the subsidiary mm-hmm. and you know a parent company and a lot of independence with the you know subsidiary. So um, there's a bunch of labels that were that have joined the hive. Uh, pun intended, um, but <laughs> as they joined the hive, they didn't lose their independence or lose their color. So it's kind of like, you know, they didn't have to adapt to the current like black and white logo of hive. They can all kind of have their a little bit of different um, flavor, uh, flair, and so Adore is one of those um, agencies that is part of it. They have, uh, I believe, they have six. Yeah. Uh, currently, subsidiary agencies. Mm. Another one of them is Source Music. Mm. Um, another one is um, uh, Billet Lab, which is where you know. And and the the conflict right now, um, depending on how you look at it, it could be viewed as a like you said, an internal conflict, or it could be looked as a conflict between the labels, which is still internal, but they also act very independently. All right. Well, we'll get to why the multi-level a label, excuse me, strategy becomes an issue because it is a first of its kind in South Korea of this scale. So they're trying this out for the first time, which is where maybe some of the confusion and the noise and the disagreements arise. They don't have precedent to look back at. For example, I can't imagine a day where SM or JYP or YG would released two girl groups simultaneously, but it turned out because this was a multi-label strategy, Source Music's Liz Seraphim ended up going head-to-head against Adore's New Jeans. Yeah, and and, the, and obviously that's for the current like comeback, right? Or yeah. the current um, strategy. But, you know, if you actually look deeper into it, there's a lot more drama because um, there uh, just a few days ago, another expose came out about how um, the you know the chief uh, creative uh, chief brand officer um, uh, uh, Hijin uh, Min, Min Hijin right Min, Min, Min. her actual first role at Hyde was uh, to basically start a girl group for Source Music right but ended up wanting to you know or ended up being able to start her own label Adore and a, a new label not acquired by Hyde like Source was but a new label like started by Hyde and creating a new girl group called New Jeans so. And some of the members were part of the trainee program at Source that if, you know, who knows, if they had been there and stayed, they could have become part of La Seraphim, you know. Mm. So there's all this, like, history. And also, obviously the fans who love um, these artists and the artists themselves who've been through so much, you know, um, history. Until they debuted, yeah. Even before they debut, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of backstory here. And depending on which side you're on, you know, it looks uh, bad for the other, right? Or it looks mm. bad for my, you know, your side. So. Mm. There, um, you know, and, and actually, some people have been saying, kind of very simplifying it, saying like, you know, this uh, conflict between mm-hmm. these labels that are mm-hmm. part of one company is kind of like a Samsung Galaxy S complaining that the Samsung Galaxy A copied them. So <laughs> I heard that on a, I saw this on a news uh, uh, article on like, SBS, right? Yes, but you know what? I don't think that's actually right. It's, it's you know what it is. It's, to me, the way I look at it, it's more like when Disney they bought Marvel and they bought Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. right? So what? Uh, but the conflict is, you know, a Star Wars movie is copying the Avengers movie with a new, you know, character spinoff. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's not the same like Samsung Galaxy brand, you know, like that. That comparison is. It's it is more like um, it is a little bit more, you know, complicated because they are such fiercely independent and um, like uh, creative organizations that have mm-hmm. such uh, kind of different color that you can't 
say that it, it's not easy to say that they're just all one, mm. um, you know, color or one uh, part of one company. You're absolutely me. right, Isaac, to say that it's it's pretty complex and also unprecedented, which makes it really yeah. hard for us to make any sort of comparisons at home, at least. But just for the sake of today's conversation, maybe we can look at the two major sides of the story. Hybe alleges that Adore CEO Minnie Jin was attempting to separate from Hybe that currently owns 80% of Adore shares, prompting that very first internal audit. Minnie Jin fiercely fought back, stating the problem lies with Hybe's newest girl group, uh, Eyelet, copying the new jean styling. Could you maybe elaborate further on the both sides' cases? Yeah, definitely. So, you know... Like I said earlier, like depending on which perspective you kind of uh, align yourself with, you know, if you look at it though, both arguments they are not mutually exclusive. Mm. So the way I look at it is they could actually both be true, you know, and um, <laughs> because this is such a public fight, like like we said, this is not just a, in, you know, like it's it is he said she said, mm. but it's like he said she said on the stock market, right? Like everybody <laughs> is interested, everyone right. is right. talking. So, and since it is so public, it's not like a, it's not like a secret cacao chat that they're sending and saying this. They're actually saying this publicly. So, I think that the probability of what they're saying being true is a lot higher than if it was like in behind closed doors, mm-hmm. because they have it's going on the record, right? The the, uh, the media is reporting on it, and mm-hmm. everybody's talking about it. So, when you look for, when I look at it, it, I think both could be true. You know, they are mm-hmm. not. Um, mutually exclusive. It, it almost sounds like when, you know, a classic debate uh, tactic that some people use, um, it, you know, it, is a tactic called the whataboutism, right? So you have an issue, like, I have a problem with this, which is, you know, in this case, uh, I think it initially started with um, uh, the fact that the girl group, New Jeans, felt like they were being copied. And so the retaliation or the, you know, the, the follow-up of it was, uh, wait a second, no, we need to internally audit them because of something like this, you know, power mm-hmm. struggle and the conspiracy. And it's like, but what, and then it's kind of like, um, you know, instead of dealing with, you know, like this, the real, the first problem, it's like adding another one as a deflection or, or kind of diverting the attention to, hey, what about this problem? You know, like, what about the fact that she tried to take over with, you know, her shares and 80% is owned by high, but so like the conversation keeps jumping here and there and back and forth. So mm-hmm. is, you know, I think you got to look at both things because I think they could be both true. But I mean, if it if it turns out there are in fact overlapping elements between Eyelid and New Jeans concepts, which are in- incredibly hard to define in the first place, which is why legally speaking, it seems hard to prove. Uh, is it fair game considering that the boundaries for sister brother groups or who trained under this big giant umbrella becomes more murky? Well, if you want to know like the, how how it stands legally, just wait a little bit. You know, I'm sure this is going to go to court, and we're going to find out. But sure. like you say, you know, um, when it's such a when it is a kind of a family affair or internal within you know mm. internal subsidiaries fighting, um, I think that it takes a lot of um, ammunition or a lot of reasons for it to get to this point. So mm. it could be the copying. It could be uh, there could be a lot of egos here. There could be a lot of pride. There could be because everyone is, you know, these companies are fiercely competitive, right? And it's almost like um, when we watch a game like, uh, when we watch, you know, Squid Game and, like, the competitors are friends, but then they have to compete each other to death because they need to get, you know, that big Mm -hmm. pot of money. So it could be that um, the friendly competition has just kind of, you know, hit a tipping point where it's become a deadly competition. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I think the shareholders of Hybe are probably, you know, feeling that right now. It mm. had like a, what, an 8% drop yeah. um, because of the news. So Overnight. I mean, this is, mm. Yeah, so, I mean, it, 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 is, a, it, it, it is a mess. But um, I think, you know, because it is unprecedented, like you said, that mm. this is something that a lot of people, you know, are, are learning a lot from. And hopefully it will, you know, be resolved. And, um, you know, the thing about stocks, even if it drops 8%, you know, or 15 or 20 percent. As long as you don't sell, you don't lose. So uh, <laughs> be in it for the long the, game. <laughs> yeah. The stockholders, if they just hold, hold and not sell, then they're not actually losing money. Just wait for the stock to bounce back when, you know, obviously this all this drama is going to pass. Are you giving my listeners financial advice? <laughs> no, this is not. Uh, this is not. <laughs> it's, it's just one of the common threads. All right. Uh, as you've rightfully brought up, Isaac, Hybe is a pioneer in terms of this multi-label firm housing six different labels under one roof in South Korea. The corporate structure of this scale is unprecedented in the K-pop industry, not to mention Hybe is the first to 
be even shortlisted as potentially a conglomerate in South Korea. So what are the challenges of this brand new multi-label system? So um, if you look at the traditional, you know, top three labels, <clears throat> SM, you know, YG and, and JYP, right? Um, you can see that there is a kind of a company culture that kind of uh, flows through most of the artists. For example, um, SM has been really promoting this pink blood um, as, as the pink is their color mm. and um, their corporate color. And so kind of, you know, and then even before that, you know, there was the whole concept of SM town where uh-huh. everybody are, are, you know, we're all one family in a town and like everybody kind of, <laughs> even though they are different, you know, they are a lot more aligned. And, and you're going to talk about YG family, aren't you? Oh, God, we sound so old, Isaac. Ancient. <laughs> Actually, I was going to say, uh, even before that, I'm older than you. So, YG, uh, uh, um, but yeah, but uh, YG, definitely the YG family, um, 21, Blackpink, uh, uh, Baby Monster, you know, there's a flow there too. But, you know, if you go back, even like when JY, with JYP, uh, even before the YG family and all that, you know, when JYP was a singer himself, he used to always, you know, do the JYP, you know, like that little uh, insert into the music that was like yeah. their, like, you know, corporate logo in the, in the songs, right? Mm. So, yeah, it, th- that's the kind of, traditional uh label um kind of uh, brand new yeah yeah but with hype it's hype has become instead of like a restaurant <clears throat> it's become more like a potluck you know and so you've got um one company that is acquired you know like let's say you know like pletus entertainment you know when they bought 17 well you know it's like steak hmm. and then you got like you know source music coming in <clears throat> with la seraphim and they're like wine right mm-hmm. but then they're not they're not red wine it's like white wine it's like mm-hmm. white wine with steak and then you you bring out like you know new jeans the door which is like kimchi and like <laughs> does this work does this fit but you know you know the, the flavors might be different but at a potluck you know like everybody bringing something thing people love potlucks because you know there's so many different flavors and diverse tastes that can be experienced mm-hmm. and this is all happening at one label that's, I think, the part that is very unprecedented. And I think the reflection of that was in the stock market, right? When mm-hmm. when Hyde went public and had acquired all these, you know, huge labels with, like, you know, huge, um, you know, teams of, like, professionals who, who've been in the business and the game for so long. I mean, it was, it, it was like a no-brainer that they were going to just explode, you know? Okay, so purely from a business standpoint, how much ownership does Hybe or Source Music or Adore have over New Jeans can be questioned. As you alluded to earlier, Minji in 2017 began training under Source Music, Honey, in 2019. They were cast through an open audition hosted by Hybe and Source Music. So this all comes into question. Pretty uh, extensive history there. So history, um, it really depends on you know, how or when you're looking back, right? Hmm. Uh, hindsight is 2020, but what we're talking about now this week will be different from what we realize next week. You know, uh, a few months ago when we talked about the controversy with 50-50, you know, hmm. the whole uh, music industry and the communities and the fan base was like swinging left and right about like, who's at fault? And like, all of a sudden, the articles coming out from here, articles coming out from a different source, recordings coming out from, you know, someone's phone and another one's video, you yeah. know, video from, you know, so, like, right now, I think we're, we're like, really, you know, um, at the forefront of wh- what's going on right now. Okay. Uh, I don't think that uh, it's, it's a good time to make any, you know, like, right now, we, we just kind of just grab your popcorn and um, pay attention. Mm. Uh, but it's, uh, I think it's still, you know, about the ownership. For example, like, the final, um, the, the statement that Hyde made that, you know, they own 80% and then, you know, the 20% is... Uh, and then the whole conspiracy of trying to take over the management rights and all this stuff. I mean, I think that that's where it is today. Okay. But but the artist that came from Source Music originally, you know, and um, all that, that's historical and those are true. But because that happened doesn't mean that Source Music has any claim to the members of New Jeans anymore. In, in, in fact, part of, I believe, uh, it was it was made public that part of that transfer from Source Music to this, um, you know, to, the, to Adore or, or to, to create this new girl group, um, was that the there was an internal like repayment right of mm. the um, fees, you know? So it wasn't done like it wasn't like stolen. It wasn't it was done with a handshake and it was done mm. with a contract with contracts, right? Right. Yeah, and the bank accounts reflect that. So um, yeah, depending on when you look at it, who owns what? Like, is it can be argued, but you know, mm. at the end of the day, right now it's Hybe owns. You know, Hybe used to own hundred percent, but mm. now owns you know 80 percent of the equity shares of you know this not even private not even public it's a private company that 
Um, it's just numbers they make up for, you know, <laughs> with internal accounting. So. I, I went into Hive's website just to see what the branding was all about. And one thing was very certain. Since day one, their slogan and go-to motto has been, it's all about the music. So it makes it really hard when their internal affairs are being aired out very publicly through the press. Now, through this murky waters, New Jeans is eyeing a comeback next month. Until then, we'll keep close tabs on the story. Thank you so much, Isaac. All right. Let's, let's, I mean, hopefully everything will work out. You know, this, yeah. this, this is very, it's just unprecedented, as we said. Thanks, Isaac. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.